Good morning, Marisa Fletcher here. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to understand the utility bill. You know, electric bills are complicated. They're different for each utility. And what's worse is they're constantly being changed and manipulated. Higher rates, different rate schedules and new schemes by the utility companies to charge their customers more for the same product. Most Americans don't understand the cost and fees of their utility bill. So your ability as a seller to understand and explain the bill to your customers is crucial to showing them how converting to solar energy can have tremendous economic and environmental benefits. Reading the electric bill gives us insight. We need to understand our customers' energy habits. Um, it's not just about the dollar amount or you know what they pay to the utility because that can vary greatly between each market and each utility company, but also it's about the amount of energy that the customer consumes. Uh, there was a study done by the U.S. Energy Administration in 2019, and basically it says the average annual electricity consumption for a U.S. residential home was about 10,399 kilowatt hours. Um, so that's an average of about 867 kilowatt hours per month. So depending on the utility they get their electricity from, the details about the rates and the charges will vary for each customer. Uh, there are several charges that are often listed on the electric bill um, because utilities charge customers for much, much more than just generating electricity. Uh, the bills include charges for delivery, transmission, distribution, uh, grid maintenance, wages for workers' salaries, service fees, energy cost adjustments, and many other line items that even most seasoned professionals won't and don't understand. Um, so your customers are going to get a utility bill each month and where those charges come from are actually generated from their electric meter. So the connection between the customer and the utility is the electric meter. Uh, this is what the utility uses to calculate how much to charge the customer each month. Um, so this electric meter on the home is recording how much electricity that homeowner uses um, and it's charged using a kilowatt hour as the unit of measurement, KWH, kilowatt hour. So what makes this electric meter turn? Well, half of the electricity that we use in our home is mostly going to be for heating and cooling. Um, more than any other major appliance, HVAC systems make up about 46% of the average U.S energy homeowners consumption. Uh, next, you have water heaters and other major appliances come next, followed by lighting and all the other devices that we plug in on um, any given day. So what does this mean? Any time that we use a kilowatt hour of electricity, the electric meter spins and the utility knows just how much they can charge that homeowner or that household on their next bill for electricity. Okay, because it's calculating that for us. So do you guys have any ideas why it's really, really, really important to learn how to read an electric bill? Well, there's a number of factors, um, but mainly we use that electric bill to determine the size of the system that we're going to need for that household because no two customers are the same. Um, we also want to educate the customer about their energy costs, what they're currently paying versus what they could be saving by going solar, right? Um, we also need to qualify the customer's costs for power. What are they currently paying today to that utility? And then we also need to look at their financing, okay? And the bill's gonna help us determine what's the best financing for that customer. Uh, it is very important to understand that solar is going to be the second to third most important decision that many homeowners are going to make in their lifetime. So it's truly imperative to understand that utility bill uh, so that we can properly educate that homeowner and determine if their home is eligible for solar or what savings are eligible to receive by going solar. The way we're going to do that is, you know, by going through and detailing a value proposition to that homeowner, okay? Because the value of solar is determined by whatever their current situation is with the utility and how much we can save them by going solar, okay? So what we need to know is how much do they pay for power right now? 
how high are their electric bills right now? That's it's, so it's crucial to get a very clean bill, right? Uh, defining our customer's value proposition is based on real accurate data from the utilities. It's not guesswork. Um, that value proposition is based on a number of factors, including the kilowatt hour consumption of that household, the cost that that household is paying per kilowatt, um, we also need to look at their solar kilowatt hour production. And then again, we're going to need to look at the financing parameters. Um, what is the interest rates, down payments? What are those monthly payments going to look like? Once we take a look at all of those factors, that's going to help us determine uh, the value proposition for our homeowner. And again, each one is different. Uh, there's other factors that can come into play that help determine a homeowner value proposition, such things such as batteries. There's some markets that batteries are, are a great value proposition for the homeowner. Um, roofing, because we can do roofing and HVAC or some other home upgrades with that solar install. So that might be a homeowner value proposition. And then again, in some markets, we also offer different incentives and rebates that's another value proposition for the homeowner. So each homeowner is different. The value prop is different for each one, um, but it's based on a variety of those factors. Okay, so again, we always need a clean, clear copy of the electric bill, okay? Not only does it help us understand the value proposition for the homeowner, it's gonna help us determine their eligibility um, it's also a crucial part of the sales design and implementation side of our solar business, right? Um, because when we get a clean utility bill for every customer, we're certain to provide a successful business proposition with power, okay? We can't really do that if we don't have a clean, clear bill, okay? Uh, other reasons of why we need the bill is that it's actually required by our financing partners in order to fund that project for the customer. So our customers won't get their loan without providing a copy of their electric bill to confirm their energy needs, as well as their account details. Got to have all that information. Um, it's also necessary to determine the savings and the financial value that that client is going to be receiving. Again, we don't just show ballpark estimates and we don't just do guesswork and, and try to guess and figure it out, but we provide accurate estimates using real data from the actual bills or from the actual utility customer. Uh, I'm sorry, from the utility company. So our customers know exactly what they can realistically expect once they do go solar with us. Um, that bill is also crucial to determine the size of the system our customer is gonna need. So installing the right size system means our customer is only paying for the power that they're using. We don't want them paying for more that they need and we don't want them to fall short of what their energy needs are. Um, another very, very important detail is that you don't get paid without that clean, clear copy of the bill. Uh, so again, at this point, I wanna ask, are there any key takeaways for why that electric bill is so important? Yeah, we need a clean, clear copy of that bill. Very important. Okay. So after we receive a clean, clear copy of the bill, we're going to go into the contract that's going to be submitted to our intake team. It's going to be submitted and reviewed by the intake team. Um, and that bill is going to be reviewed for clarity. So if the bill is illegible or it's missing some required information or it doesn't meet one of these requirements, it'll actually put that project on hold. We don't want this to happen. We don't want to slow down our customer's project. So again, a clean, clear copy of the bill is important. Uh, the bill is going to need to have the homeowner's full name and address on it. It's going to need to have um, a billing cycle that's less than six months old. Can't be. We want to make sure that we're, we're within their current energy cycle, energy needs. It needs to display the number of kilowatt hours consumed in that billing month, as well as the graph that's going to be showing on the bill. Uh, and again, it needs to have the total bill amount to confirm the accuracy of the customer's value proposition. So these four items are what's needed, full name, billing cycle date less than six months, total bill amount, and how many kilowatt hours were consumed in that billing cycle. 
Uh, the purpose of contract review is simply to ensure that all of the costs and savings associated with the solar contract that your customer signed is accurate and realistic. Okay, so contracts actually won't get processed until all those details are verified. So again, if you don't have a clean, clear copy of the bill, they can't review that information, they can't verify it, and it may put that project on hold, which is what we try to avoid as sellers. We don't want to delay our clients. So what do you need from your customer? A copy of their electric bill. Not just the electric bill, but a current, clean, clear copy of the electric bill with all pages. It's got to show the customer's name, their account information, make sure that it's clear and legible. Um, it's also going to include the usage graph on the bill, um, and it's going to provide the cost for the month so that we can calculate the savings um, for the client properly. OK, so we want to be able to make sure that we can calculate those savings properly for the client so they can have realistic expectations once they go solar with us. So this is an example of a clean, clear copy of a bill. Is this a good example of a clean, clear and current copy of a bill? Give you a second to take a look at it. So no. This is a partial image of a bill. It doesn't include a usage graph. It doesn't include the annual information on it. And it's not current. So we're looking for something like this with all the information, client information, account information, clean, clear, copy. This is not clean, clear, copy. What about this? What do you think? Clean, clear copy of the bill? Oh no, this one's this one's obviously not a clean copy of a bill. Uh, this is a utility rate schedule for the utility company. So it doesn't include the customer's information. It doesn't include any usage data. It's not specific to our client. Okay. So those are examples of not clean, clear copies. Again, what is your key takeaway for what the contract review team is going to need from us? Key takeaway. Clean, clear copy of a bill is what they're going to need from us. OK. Um, just a few other key takeaways. Some utility bills uh, contain more than just the electricity charges. Right. It might also include the gas or the water charges. That's OK. We still need a clean, clear copy and we'll just account for the electricity charges on that bill. OK. And then also electric bills typically include two main charges, uh, supply and then also distribution or transmission charges. OK, so we're looking for those delivery charges and we're looking for those distribution transmission charges. Again, why we want all pages of the bill. Make sure it's clean. Clear copy, all pages. Okay, so here is an example of a bill. Uh, this one is actually from Eversource in Massachusetts. And as you see here on this example, this bill is separated into two categories. The first category is electricity. The second category is gas. Um, each are labeled at the top. So the homeowner knows the difference, okay? But their bill includes both charges for electricity and also for gas, okay? Here in California, where I'm situated locally, uh, PG&E has electricity and gas on their, bill, on their bill as well. Department of Water and Power has electricity and gas on their bill as well. There's a lot of the um, AHJs or the other utilities. That's the technical name for the other utilities. There's a lot of other utilities that include everything on one bill. OK. But Edison, on the other hand, only includes electricity. OK, so everyone's different. Now, there are several charges that are often listed on the electric bill um, because the utilities are charging our customers for more than just generating electricity. OK, like I mentioned before, there's two main categories. Uh, the first one is supply. Uh, that's the charges that the utility companies charge the customers for generating that electricity at their power plants, creating that dirty energy at their power plants. Um, that's those are our supply charges. OK, uh, that other main category is delivery charges. 
Um, that's the cost that the utility charges our customers to send them electricity through the grid. Okay, those are delivery charges. So our clients get charged for supply and delivery. You're going to see those on the bill when you take a look at the breakdown of the bill. Um, but there's also a plethora of other charges that are included on that bill, including taxes, fees, uh, energy conservation charges, renewable energy programs. There's franchise fees, you know, um, wildfire recovery fees. You know, and there's all kind of other fees that the utility companies calculate on the customer's bill, which is the reason why those bills are so high. OK, so I have a question for the audience. Does anybody understand all of these charges? Could you explain those charges to your customer? What do you think? Well, you know what? Don't worry. You don't have to understand each of these charges, but you should understand why your customer needs to know what they're being charged and what's actually showing up on their bill. You should pull it up and show them so that they completely understand all those additional charges. Why? So that both you and they can understand the charges that are going to be avoided once they go solar. Okay, no longer are they going to be subject to all those charges because they're going to go solar and avoid those charges. Okay. All right, here's another example of a bill. Uh, this bill also is gonna reflect what's called a flat customer charge from the utility that's charged each month to the clients. Um, in general, it's a utility service charge. It's called a customer charge on, on a lot of the bills. It's an unavoidable charge for being connected to the grid, okay? So even once our homeowners go solar, or, or let me rephrase that. So yeah, so, so once our homeowners go solar, they're still going to get a small charge from the utility company, and it's called the grid connection fee, okay, because they're going to be charged for being connected to the grid. So we'll never tell our homeowners that they're going to 100% never owe anything again to the utility, because at the very minimum, they're going to have to pay a monthly grid connection fee to the homeowner, okay? Even if they offset 100% of their power from the solar system, there's going to be a monthly fee there, all right? Um, something else that it's important to understand is how to calculate the monthly electricity cost and consumption from for the homeowner. OK, how do you do that based off of this bill? OK, so basically you need to know how much your customer is paying for power so you can calculate and explain how they will save money by paying less for each kilowatt hour after they switch over to solar. OK, I always tell homeowners you're going to be paying cheaper. You're going to be you're going to be paying for the energy you need, but at a much cheaper kilowatt hour at a much cheaper rate. OK, uh, this is how you present the benefits to the homeowner accurately based on what their current situation is. It's also important to ensure the homeowner is correctly calculating their monthly usage each month and the cost of that power. You can only do that with a full, clean, clear copy of the bill. OK, so let me ask the audience. How would you calculate the cost per kilowatt on this bill that's pictured here? Okay. Well, let me show you. Uh, the homeowner's bill in this example is $81.18. Their consumption for this period is 311 kilowatt hours. If you divide $81.18 by 311 kilowatt hours, it is going to equal 26 cents per kilowatt, 26 cents per kilowatt. That's what this particular homeowner is paying for their energy costs from the utility, okay? Um, something else to note, uh, sometimes the amount, the, the total charge that that customer received that month is not the full amount that they were charged for. Another reason we need a full, clean, clear copy of the bill is sometimes when we're looking at these charges, there's discounts or adjustments that are in these charges. In California, there's a really big uh, program called the CARE program, where there's a discount that's received by that homeowner if there's someone that's living in the home that's disabled or that qualifies for this CARE program. Sometimes that's a couple hundred dollars a month that they're saving, but that is not a permanent discount, okay? And that doesn't reflect the true rate of what they're paying. So when you see this total cost of electricity, you want to also look at the bill to make sure that there's no other adjustment charges, no other late payments, or no other non-electric charges that you need to back out of the total cost of the electric bill, okay? 
So another reason why you need a full clean clear copy. All right, another thing that's crucial when you're looking at the electric bill is that you need to know that some utilities have what's called a monthly billing plan, okay? Is your customer being on a monthly budget plan or are they paying based on their actual usage? So um, what, the, what the utility does is they offer this plan and if the homeowner is on that monthly budget plan, the utility takes a number of kilowatt hours the homeowner consumed last year they assume the homeowner is going to use the same amount the next year, and then they create a monthly average for the homeowner to pay based on that amount. Okay, This allows the utility to spread out the total cost the homeowner pays for power over the course of the year. So as a result, if the homeowner lives in a hot part of the country and they run up their bill during the summer months where they have really high bills because they run that HVAC during the summer months, they're going to see a lower bill during the summer months. Okay, But on the converse side, that same homeowner is going to see a higher bill during the winter months. But the utility company is trying to even out that payment to help avoid the shock of those summer payments, basically. OK, but that's called a budget plan. And you need to know if the homeowner is on that type of plan or if they're paying um, based on their actual usage. OK. So something else to look out for on that utility bill. All right. Now, another question that I have for the audience. What is net metering? Can you please tell me what is net metering or if you have an idea of what that is? Okay, well, let me give you an answer. Great, great. So net metering uh, is a billing mechanism that credits solar energy systems for the electricity they add to the grid. When their system creates more energy than they need, there's a surplus. So they're gonna add that excess energy back to the grid. And the utility companies, some utility companies will pay homeowners for that excess energy, okay? That's called net metering, okay? Um, there's also something called avoided costs. Uh, the avoided cost is the price that the customer would have paid to produce the same energy itself or to get it from another source based on the fair market price, okay? So we basically, there's an avoided cost, okay? We produce that energy ourselves on the rooftop with our solar, Right. So we get it at that cost versus the cost that we would have paid for getting it from the utility at the time and the rates that they're charging us at. That's the avoided cost. OK, so it's very important to know if your utility provides net metering, because that's going to help you accurately um, give proper expectation to the homeowner on what they can expect. OK, there's 38 states right now, Washington, D.C., and four territories that offer net metering. Um, and utilities in two additional states, Idaho and Texas, have voluntarily adopted some net metering programs. Um, there's seven other states, though, Arizona, Georgia, Hawaii, Indiana, Nevada, Maine, and Mississippi, um, that have statewide distributed generation compensation rules that are other than net metering. So when you're helping that homeowner, it's very important to know your market and know what the rules are in your market for net metering. OK, do they offer it? If they offer it, is it one to one net metering? What's the avoided cost? Right. That's based on what plan that client would be on. Had they not gone solar? What would that avoided cost look like? Um, what's the month to month charges? Right. Um, some markets offer what's called an annual true up where they where they watch that usage throughout the year. They watch what's generated, what's credited, what's pulled at the end of the year. If there's a surplus. They give a credit to the homeowner for that surplus that was sent back to the grid. Uh, but also on the converse, if there was a, a, a negative amount from the system, meaning that the homeowner had to pull from the grid, there's going to be a cost the homeowner is going to have to pay to the utility company for the excess energy that they generated. OK, so we need to understand how that works. And if our utility offers an annual true up, some do monthly, some do annual. Right. And then there's also aggregate and, distri and distributed generation charges that you need to know what rules apply for the market that you're helping that homeowner in. OK, so very important to understand uh, the net metering rules for the utility that you're working in. Very important to understand your market. All right. So now that we understand 
the importance of the bill, now that we understand the importance of net metering, how do you help your customers get a clean, clear, current copy of a bill? Or how do you work with your customer to get a clean, clear, current copy of the bill? Okay, well, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. Um, one of the ways that you can do it is you can log right in to their utility online um, and download, go to the billing history section, go to the statement section and download a PDF version copy of a clean bill, okay, for you to use and work off of. So you can go right online with the customer on Zoom or right there in the home, right there on the phone maybe, um, go to the website for the utility and download a clean clear copy if they don't have one available. Um, you can also scan a copy of their most recent bill. If they have a hard copy there available for you, you can have, make sure you get all pages front and back and take a scan copy of a, of a PDF version of that bill and go ahead and text it to yourself or email it to yourself so that you have a clean, clear copy of the bill. OK, um, most of us have a smartphone and they have really good ways that you can do it with a smartphone on your camera. You want to make sure that it's high resolution. You want to scan all the pages of the bill. You want to make sure it's not blurry, but you want a clean, clear copy of the bill. OK, so those are the three easiest ways. Log in to the website. The homeowner may have a copy there while you're right there on the, on the spot using your camera to, to grab a clean, clear copy. Um, and scanning those over as a PDF and, and texting or emailing them to yourself for that clean, clear copy. Okay, but it's super crucial. It's super important. I think this training has demonstrated uh, why a clean, clear copy of the bill is important to accurately help that homeowner um, go solar. All right, and then last but not least, I want to give you a couple of examples of what an electric bill looks like after your customer goes solar. So um, this is what it may look like when your customers go solar. Remember we said we had a monthly connection fee. This monthly connection fee is $8.23. So it's a grid connection fee of $8.23 down from whatever this bill used to be monthly. Here's an example of Edison. It shows negative energy charges for this client. They have $262 worth of negative energy charges because they generated excess energy that was sent back to the grid. Here's an example here, pre-solar, $448 was that bill, post-solar, $124.69. So here's some examples um, of what some post-solar bills look like. It's also a really, really great idea to ask your customers for an electric bill um, once they go solar so that you can share that with new prospective clients and show them actual examples of what it will look like once they go solar. Okay. And again, at this time, I wanna thank everyone for um, listening to me go through this training. The key takeaways, why do you think we need the electric bill is what you should be knowing after listening to me give this training. What makes it so important? What makes it so important to you and your power business to collect that electric bill? At that point, at this point, I wanna thank you all so much for listening in and I'll catch you around on the very next training. Have a blessed one.